Hello everybody, I'm Dan McAllister with Avantico and I'm here today to talk to you about the Financial Period Close Workspace. I'm on the landing page in the demo environment in Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations and what I see here is the list of all workspaces that I have access to based on my security. We're just going to look at the Financial Period Close Workspace today so I'll click into it here. I think the best way to understand the Financial Period Close process is to start by looking at configuration. So we will navigate to the link in the workspace. And we'll start out on the template section in the financial period close configuration form. So uh, again, this is a demo system. So this is the financial period close that Microsoft has provided as an example. So if you were setting this up for your own environment, you would start from scratch and set this all up that in a way that makes sense for your business. But we'll go through the first three lines here of the configurations so that we can understand uh, what's going into this and then we'll go through and we'll do some, some tasks. Starting at the beginning, going from left to right, uh, <clears throat> there are areas within this. Uh, the area term accounts receivable is something that can be determined. We will look at that over here in task areas in a little bit. And then a task is something that is free text that you would enter that, uh, to, that matches the task that needs to be done in this step. This column is due date relative to period end date, plus or minus days. So day zero, in, in this case, uh, our example financial period close was 816, which was two days ago. And so day zero is the first day of the close. So day zero would be 817. At 5 p.m., this task is due. The closing role is another option over here on the left. You can call this whatever you'd like, but in this case it was called the AR Invoicing Clerk. And then you can list the number of companies that are relevant to this task. So for example, if, you're, if, if one of your companies did not do accounts receivable, then it would not make sense for this task to exist for that company. So you would not include this as one of your companies in this task. The task link allows users to, when they go into the closing worksheet themselves, to click the task and have them take it directly to a form in D365. So uh, you can assign a task link or not by clicking the drop down. You could do a menu item or a URL, and you could take it out of the system if necessary. But in this case, they might have gone to accounts receivable and orders and all sales orders in order to select this task. We'll demonstrate that when we get to the closing worksheet itself. Looking on the right, there's two more fields. One is dependency. This is the very first task in our list, so it doesn't make sense for it to be dependent on anything, but we'll look at that when we get to our third item. And then there's another one called attachments. So with your uh, closing schedule templates, you can create attachments. There are a couple of good use cases for this. One might be work instructions to explain to somebody who's doing this for the first time uh, how to do a task. Um, it also might be, you know, say this is part of your year-end close, uh, it might be a task you only do once a year, and so you need to add some additional information so that when you come back to it a year later, you remember what you did the year before to complete that task. Alternatively, there could be some sort of a schedule or worksheet that needs to be populated as part of the task to help figure out some numbers or something that could be attached to as well. Going to the second line, this is similar, it's accounts receivable item, post open payment journals, is due on day one, which is today, it's due in 27 minutes. Uh, the due time is 10.30, the closing role is AR Payments Clerk, these five companies, and the task link is to a payment journal. And then going to the third line, once we've finalized our period billing and posted in the open payment journals, we can verify our customer aging. So you can see the task link is to the customer aging report. For this line, we do have a dependency. So I'm going to click on this line, and then I click the ellipsis up top, and I can look at dependencies. So what this is doing is it's grouping by task area, as listed here on the left of my sheet, all tasks that are listed within the schedule. So in this case, the box is checked for both tasks that came prior to verify customer aging to finalize period billing and post open payment journals. So what this means is when we go into doing the close itself, we cannot complete this task, or it doesn't allow us to check this task as complete until these two tasks have been checked as complete. And we'll show you what that looks like. Another thing to note is that you can have multiple templates. So this is a month end template. You could also have a year and a quarter end template that has specialized tasks for the year and quarter end. 
or you could even use this for something that's not relevant to a, a period close, you know, some sort of other financial task that requires users to, to collaborate on a variety of things. This is not exclusive to the close, it's just what it's typically used for. So uh, going into the other setup pieces, we'll start at the bottom with closing rules. So closing rules, um, th in this case, this is what Microsoft has provided. Again, this is free form, you can call it whatever you want. It's not linked to security in any way. Um, the important limitation is to know that you can only have one person per closing role per company. So if you have multiple AP invoicing clerks, for example, you would need to, uh, within a single company, you would need to define either AP invoicing clerk one, two, three, or split it by business area or something along those lines. You would not want to specify the person in the closing role. That comes um, in the next part. If we go to resources now, this is looking at employees that's created in an HR module. An employee is associated with the user and the user setup. That'd be something your IT team would do. So looking at Arnie here, he has two closing roles, the AR invoicing clerk and the AR payments clerk, and he has that role in all five companies. He does not have to have that role in all five companies. He could have it in just one or two or four or whatever, and somebody else could have that role in the other companies as relevant. Also, notice up here under view, he could either see only his assigned tasks or he could see all tasks and statuses. So typically your task users would have only assigned tasks where if they just have a handful of things to do in the close, whereas your supervisors would, would want to be able to see all tasks and statuses to manage the progress within the close. Task areas is how tasks are grouped within the closing sheet template. So again, this is free form. Typically it aligns with the modules that you're using. And then calendars allows you to create a working calendar so that when you're using the due date relative field in the closing sheet, it's not scheduling people to do work on weekends or holidays, or even if you're doing a, have a 980 schedule, you could avoid uh, your alternate weeks, have you know, the day that that's off, so long as it's consistent across your workforce. So once all these things are set up and you've created the lines in your template, it would be somebody's task to create the closing schedule prior to the close. So in this case, again, I, I created a closing schedule. I called it August 2020 for a period that ended August 16th for the sake of demonstration. I used, a, used the month end template with all five companies. And if this closing schedule was complete and I wanted to make sure that no changes could be done to it so that I can keep information for audit trail purposes, I could lock it down by clicking this box. This would be the task of whoever's managing the close. So I'll navigate back to the financial close workspace now, and I could choose which closing schedule I'm working on. You'll see all unlocked closing schedules in this list. So I'm on August 2020. And uh, in the workspace on the left, you can see some summary tiles of past due tasks, remaining tasks for today, blocked tasks for today, meaning that there's dependencies and then all remaining tasks. In the middle, uh, information about those tasks on the right, your links. And you can see your status by company, percentage complete, number of tasks remaining. You can look at all tasks, task due today or task past due. You can look at that same information by area. Again, these are as defined by you and by person. And then finally, you can look at your task list. It will expand for me, here we go. And here I can see all tasks that are out in the system. So I can see this one is late. There is an exclamation point here indicating that it is behind schedule. Uh, if I was acting on Arnie's behalf, I could come in and finish this task. So if I click this button here, it'll take me to the form within that company. So that company doesn't have any sales orders this month. Uh, which is fine if I filter down to a different company and find the same form. Ah, so uh, up here at the top, if a task has already been set as complete, it would be hidden uh, in this form unless you click this show completed task button. So let me change companies here. I'll look at USMF and I can see this task has actually been completed, was completed yesterday. So um, 
the task will no longer show up as long as they're complete unless you click this button. So if I remove the completion on these tasks, you can see that it no longer states that it's complete, which is what you would want. Um, that's why you'd want to lock it down so somebody couldn't uncomplete a task by accident. So you can see this is not yet complete. If I wanted to click into it here in this company, I can click right here and it'll take me to, in this case, it was the all sales orders form, which shows me all our sales orders. And once the task is complete, I can mark it as such. Same thing with the post open payment journals. If I click here, it would take me to the uh, payment journals form and then I can mark it as complete. And then once I do so, this verify customer aging form becomes available. Uh, and to, to complete as well. So that's uh, the idea of the financial period closed workspace in a nutshell. The purpose is to allow people to work together without having to send reminders via IM or email or what have you to let other people know when their tasks are complete, uh, especially in a large organization where a lot of people are working remote, which we're finding more and more common these days. This is a very useful tool to give good visibility across the company on how tasks are coming with the close or other collaborative financial processes. So thanks for your time. And uh, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us at Avantico.